Um, hello, dear friends. Welcome to today's presentation on Build Better Apps with Xcode Cloud. My name is Maxim Nagalov and I'm the CTO and the tech lead at Darwin Intelligence. Additionally, I'm the CEO of DigitMind, a software development studio specializing in native mobile development for iOS, iOS and Android, as well as web services and AI solutions. The purpose of this presentation is to introduce you to Xcode Cloud and its features. Um, we basically will split this today's presentation into two parts. The first one would be an in, in introduction to Xcode Cloud and its features, and the second part is going to be a real um, is to be a, a, a practical demonstration how to integrate Xcode Cloud into a real application. So yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, before we begin, um, let me briefly introduce myself. Um, I already mentioned uh, as <laughs> my name is Maxim Negolov and I have a strong kind of background in programming development and uh, project management. My specialization is uh, Swift, Python, TypeScript, etc. And um, yeah, mostly nowadays I'm focusing on Python, but my sp uh, but my hobby and my uh, kind of passion is uh, iOS development. I'm excited to share my knowledge, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, okay. And uh, uh, let me go back a little bit. Uh, yeah, I started my career as an iOS developer about ten years ago, and um, I still. Uh, love iOS development process. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share my knowledge and experiences with you today. So, uh, let's start by understanding what Xcode Cloud is and uh, how it has evolved over time. Xcode Cloud is a powerful continuous integration and delivery service provided by Apple for iOS app development. Not only for iOS app development, but also for other operational systems developed by Apple, such as uh, macOS, tvOS, and uh, iPad, iPadOS. Um, Xcode, Xcode Cloud provides a seamless integration with Xcode. Test flight and App Store Connect. Uh, you can configure Xcode Cloud uh, through Xcode, and uh, also you can do some configurations on App Store Connect. So, you know, simply, seamlessly, you can see the execution process on, uh, di directly on the Xcode, or you, you can uh, open the website and uh, See the uh, the process on App Store, App Store Connect. The reason for integration is to streamline the app development process, automate tests, and improve collaboration to accelerate app delivery. Xcode Cloud has its roots in the development uh, of Xcode Server. Uh, very powerful platform that was developed uh, uh, that was under um, uh, usage of uh, uh, of iOS developers for many years. Uh, and, uh, a lot of other companies who were providing services similar to Xcode Cloud they were using and they still use Xcode Server. Uh, so Xcode Cloud uh, has a truth uh, based on Xcode Server and uh, other features provided by Xcode, such as auto-signing and provisioning profiles. Um, all of us remember these nightmares. So this is, um, 
headache, I would say headache, working with provision and profiles before. Uh, was, uh, a lot of hours were spent working on it. Uh, but with, with the appearance of Xcode Cloud, auto signing, everything is so convenient. It takes literally minutes minutes to configure um, the whole um, signing process uh, and, uh, uh, in the building. And uh, um, creation of buildings, uh, builds, builds. Uh, with the introduction of Xcode Cloud, Apple has created a comprehensive solution that addresses the challenge challenges faced by developers, making the entire development cycle more convenient and efficient. Um, let's um, dive into more information about the key features uh, of Xcode Cloud. The first one is, of course, in continuous integration that um, I mentioned before. Uh, It's a kind of fundamental concept of Xcode Cloud. Uh, it's a vital in-app development. Continuous integration is a vital in-app development uh, as it allows uh, to automate the build process and receive instant feedback on code changes. Um, and Xcode Cloud seamlessly integrates Integrates with um, Xcode with your code repository. Uh, it supports um, connections with uh, the most popular services, Git control services, uh, such as uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab. The configuration process is very uh, convenient and simple. Uh, you could uh, see how it works in the real application a moment later. Um, we also, through Xcode Cloud, could uh, trigger builds automatically, and uh, we could uh, um, Xcode Cloud also uh, pro provide uh, valuable insights and. Uh, um, we can receive a, a feedback, feedback uh, easily through Xcode Cloud about uh, newly created builds. Okay, let's dive into the process. Uh, what it takes to configure the um, Xcode Cloud? As you can see, it's uh, the process is quite simple. Um, today we will provide a step-by-step -step guide, including enable, enabling Xcode Cloud and configuring it within our project, our testing project. Better uh, practical example. In addition to continuous integration, Xcode Cloud uh, seamlessly integrates with Test Flight and App Store Connect, simplifying the attribution distribution process. And uh, today we will focus on the Test Flight integration and uh, App Store Connect integration, including automatic distribution. Uh, we will demonstrate how you can effortlessly distribute your app for beta testing or submit it to the App Store. And um, yeah, let's now let's shift our focus to a real world implementation by adding and configuring Xcode Cloud in a practical scenario. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the second part of our presentation. In this second part, we will shift our focus to the real-world implementation of Xcode Cloud and how to bind and configure it in a practical scenario. 
to illustrate this we will use an application called camera scan um, I created this application specifically for these testing purposes but it's still a convenient and useful application you can uh, find it on the App Store uh, find and download it on the App Store it's, na it's named camera scan PDF and JPEG scanner uh, this is um, a tool that allows you to use uh, your camera as a scanner and create as a PDF file or JPEG files. Let's uh, download and take a look. Um, as you can see here, currently camera scan has not been integrated with Scout Cloud. Um, but we will address that today. First, um, let's switch to Xcode Cloud and um, uh, let's create two different schemes. First scheme is a camera scan, it's created by default, um, configured with the release build configuration. Um, so basically, uh, with this build release build configuration, we are using um, production environment variables. But uh, we, for instance, want to create a, a scheme that uses uh, debug uh, environment variables for uh, debugging purposes, um, uh, for development, for development purposes. So uh, let's call. Um, Let's create a new scheme and uh, let's call this scheme as uh, develop dev. And um, let's um, edit, edit it uh, by changing build configuration to debug. Okay, let's it's done. Now we have two different schemes, camera scan and camera scan dev. Camera scan uses release environment uh, um, uh, build configuration and the camera scan dev uses uh, debug build configuration. Um, what's next? Now let's switch to the Xcode cloud. Let's integrate it. To begin, you need to sign in to Scott Cloud using your credentials. I already did it, so I don't see the button to sign in. But if you if you did not sign in yet, you would see the, instead of this button, button to sign in, basically. The authorization pr procedure is quite simple. You just need to enter your cred credentials. But in my case, I, I already did it, so Let's create a workflow. Select the product, camera scan. Mm, by default, Xcode Cloud creates a default workflow uh, for you, but uh, we can modify it to suit our needs. Okay, let's press on the edit to workflow. Let's start by changing the name of the workflow. Let's call it development workflow. Um, we can skip the other parameters since, uh, since description is already quite uh, well described in the name of the workflow and uh, others, other parameters already set up correctly primary uh, such as a primary repository and project of workspace um, however uh, if you have uh, multiple workspaces and want to use a different one you can make that adjustment easily by choosing the correct one okay moving on to the environment Xcode provides um, 
default environment variables uh, that are useful for most cases. However, if you require additional custom variables, you can create them as well. In our case, we won't be using custom variables, so let's um, uh, by the way, uh, probably it would be nice if I will show you this uh, environment variables, for example. There are quite plenty of them. Um, see, I build ID, build number, bundle ID, um, the most um, often used um, variable is the CI workflow. The na uh, through this variable you can uh, find the name of the current workflow probably you will use it very often okay, let's switch back to the XX code we can try creating some test custom variable just for testing purposes you can uh, add some value let's add some value we can make it secret as well, yeah, but just uh, to take a look, just to see how it works. Okay, let's remove it. We don't need this custom custom variable. Okay, uh, uh, start conditions. Speaking of uh, Start conditions. We can uh, create um, various uh, uh, there are various options, various options to trigger workflows uh, based on certain conditions. Um, the first uh, is the branch changes. So whenever you make some um, changes onto the branches such as the commits, uh, push commits, and uh, it, uh, it will trigger a new workflow. Um, another option is uh, <clears throat> you can trigger workflows when you make uh, a new pull request. This is a very um, important and useful feature and through this uh, um, whenever you create pull request, your team uh, would be easily um, provided with a certain build for testing, right? Um, instead of, uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, reviewers, it won't be necessarily for them to download uh, the project itself, the, uh, the, this uh, branch and uh, um, check the whole uh, and uh, compile this project again on the computer and uh, just uh, to see what kind of changes were made and how it works they, uh, through this uh, uh, start condition they would be easily able to use this build and uh, see how these features works that were presented in the pull request uh, exchanges are also quite important, especially for uh, during the release. Like for instance, if you create some new uh, release tag, you could uh, um, trigger workflow to create a new build, a new release build on the schedule for um, uh, uh, schedules. Uh, uh, Start condition is also uh, quite useful, especially uh, for your testing strategy. You can set up a, a certain uh, a certain timing uh, when you want to um, uh, trigger this workflow. Uh, for unit test, you might want to run it more often. For regression test, uh, you, uh, for UI test, and to end test, you can run it uh, less often. Like one time a week, weekly, daily, and, um, and, uh, and even hourly. Hourly, probably for unit test, would be more 
Super bom. Depending on your testing strategy, of course, you can uh, schedule it for on a certain branch for for a certain branch. Okay. Um, in our case today, we want to um, trigger changes on a custom branch. Instead of master, we want to trigger it on the branch called dev. It's actually one another uh, another very convenient feature uh, branch uh, to uh, trigger this workflow um, on a certain on the, uh, branches that starts with uh, um, with a certain naming. Like if this branch contains uh, this word dev, uh, all branches with uh, all branches. Would, uh, would become a trigger so for instance uh, for uh, if all your release branches uh, um, release branches located in the release folder you can just uh, type this release release uh, and uh, it will trigger this uh, builds would be created uh, every time you create a new branch with the uh, release in front of it with the with this word with this trigger word in front of it okay let's move on to actions uh, Xcode cloud provides a range of options such as um, building testing analyzing and archiving in our case we want to create a new archive in the debug environment um, since we only want to make this build available only for internal testing uh, it's not needed for us to select this option app store but if we want to make this uh, build uh, for uh, to release later, we need to consider select this option. And, uh, in this case, uh, if we will select it, uh, the build will be available for App Store submission, but uh, it's not needed for this development workflow. Okay, by the way, let's remove this additional action that I added by mistake. You can create all 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 these other um, actions, additional actions. What to do on the build um, action? What to do on the test action? What to do analyze and what to do on archive? You can create it simultaneously on the same workflow. Workflow, uh, like for instance testing. You can uh, select certain um, certain devices where to run this test. You can select the different uh, test 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 plans. Uh, you can select even uh, certain different platforms to run it only on iOS, on Mac OS, on TVOS, and others. Yeah, but we don't need it for now. But just uh, you need to know that we have this option. We have this uh, opportunity. <coughs> And uh, also a very important feature is the post action. Um, Xcode Cloud supports integration with the uh, third party uh, services, other tools such as Slack. We can receive notifications. Uh, we can send notifications to uh, certain Slack channels if we connect them. We also can send uh, email email notifications on uh, as a, on the build success success if the build succeeded or if the build failed or for some certain reasons. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, once uh, let's send the notification to my email. Once um, all the configurations are in place, we can save and proceed. Okay, this is the repository, Bitbucket repository. As you will, uh, the three um, services uh, avail available by default um, on Xcode Cloud. Bitbucket, of course, GitHub and uh, GitLab, three most uh, popular um, Git uh, control uh, hubs. Confirm app on App Store Connect. Complete. Okay, let's see why. It is quite strange. Let's see. Let's press again. Okay, it is now configured for export. Yeah, uh, some sometimes this can uh, this uh, situations could happen, but yeah, this is this is okay. This is normal. The camera scan is now configured for export cloud. Members can view results and blah blah. Choose a branch to start your first build. Okay, we want to start our first build on the dev branch. Start build. Okay. By the way, we need to make sure that uh, we made uh, all necessary commits and pushed all the changes to the repository before starting the build let's assume that we uh, commit uh, that we uh, pushed everything uh, as the build progresses we can monitor its status on in Xcode cloud uh, as you can see here on this tab or additionally we can directly um, see the status on the App Store Connect website. Let's take a look. Let's refresh this website. And uh, now you can see that all changes that we did in Xcode were, uh, were, um, can be seen on the website directly on the App Store Connect website. So uh, the build that we run, the development workflow that we created, everything is already available on the on the website. You can see that 30% already completed, and uh, the last commit that was done. Um, once completed, we can access uh, logs, artifacts, and um, other relevant information about the build. Um, uh, one notable feature of Xcode Cloud is it supports package managers. Uh, by default, it supports Swift package manager, but uh, you can also integrate other package managers like Cocoa Pods and Carfrag. This allows you easy, easily manage your dependencies and ensure that they are properly resolved in during the build process. Uh, for uh, Swift Package Manager, you basically don't need to do anything additionally, but uh, with the Cocoa Pods uh, and the Carfrag, uh, since they are not uh, um, uh, package managers uh, uh, provided by Apple, you need to do some uh, other, uh, some minor modifications. Let's, for instance, um, see what uh, this uh, this application camera scan. It, uh, instead of Swiss package manager, uses a core pods, and uh, to 
make this package manager available you need to install uh, dependencies uh, through a script um, to do this script first you need to create this folder CI scripts and uh, uh, you need to add inside this folder this file uh, this script CI post clone there are three type of scripts that you could create on uh, different stages let's see um, let's see writing custom build script yeah, uh, there's three three types of script CI post clone that we are using right now CI prefix code build and CI post code code build on the different stages they, they run on different stages the post clone uh, is quite explicitly describing when and uh, where it runs after cloning the git repository uh, pre-excode pre build and the pre post excode build Okay, um, let's return back to the script itself, what it does. The functionality is quite simple, the comments are quite uh, basic. Um, we are using here bundle, bundler to um, control versions of our dependencies. If you don't want to use it, if you prefer to don't use it, you just can run uh, one one command pod install instead of these two commands instead of these three commands okay, install bundler bundle install and bundle check you can run only pod install okay um, there's some additional scripts but um, I think that uh, in, in this uh, through this script uh, through the script you can run uh, some additional scripts on uh, fastline or some other uh, libra libraries whatever you prefer you can uh, implement through uh, these three scripts ci post clone ci um, pre xcode build ci post code build xcode build yeah, um, um, What else? I think that uh, we basically um, explained everything, right? Uh, that concludes our presentation. We can conclude our presentation, and um, we can wait also for this uh, build to be completed. But it takes quite a uh, long time, so. Yeah. But uh, you, after the build completed, you could switch to the test flight and uh, um, oh, um, yeah. By the way, uh, uh, through Xcode Cloud, you could also can automate the process of uh, um, delivering these builds to your uh, on the test flight. For instance, uh, you can edit this uh, you can create a new build a new workflow oh, no, not for another project okay so uh, well for some reason this build failed okay whatever oh by the way it's a good opportunity for us to take a look at the reason why it failed camera does not exist in camera scan workspace oh yeah, ah, yeah, it's, you know, why? Because we did not commit it. We did not push it. That's why. Um, okay, let's create a new, new workflow. It will be called. Production.
Um, by the way, we uh, did not select uh, the scheme that we were needed to use, is the camera scan for production. And uh, we also can make some uh, post actions, like we can make this build available for internal testing, for external testing, and we additionally can notify, can notify the user, the developer, about um, certain actions about the uh, build being succeeded and the build uh, failed for certain reasons. Let's add me my email for testing group of this. Okay. Uh, ah, your yeah, artifact. Yeah, uh, we cannot uh, create this test flight external testing because uh, first of all we we would need to create this uh, groups uh, groups on the test flight and uh, yeah let's just keep it for now. But uh, yeah, basically you can see how uh, easily Xcode Cloud could be configured and um, uh, that uh, it's not that difficult, but uh, you can see the whole power power of this product.